Hello and welcome to Dear John and Hank. Or as I like to think of it, the actual name of the podcast, Dear Hank and John. Sorry, Hank, I've been gone for a few weeks and I wanted to just take control of the reins today. It's a comedy podcast about death where two brothers offer you dubious advice, answer your questions, and bring you all the week's news from both Mars and da 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 AFC Wimbledon. League One's richest side? More to come Ooh, later in the podcast. There's news. John, how are you doing today? Well, we are in real life together, Hank. We are in Los Angeles, California. Um, I'm in a great mood because the movie rights to my book, uh, Turtles All the Way Down, the, 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 it, 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 it's they, happening. Someone purchased them. Not or... just someone, the same people right. um, at Fox them. 2000 who made The Fault in Our Stars and Paper Towns movies, um, Elizabeth Gabor and Aaron Siminoff. How do you find out about that? What happens when you find out that someone got the movie rights to your books as a person who has no thing that this will one day maybe happen to him? No thing. Have you been drinking? A little bit. Okay. Um, so you get a uh, – first you get a phone call mm -hmm. that says that somebody's interested in the movie rights. And then in this case, like eight weeks later after lots of conversations and talking about – how to visualize uh, deeply internal abstract thought processes, you decide to do it. <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm so, I, I, it's just, um, I did not think that this would ever be a movie. I didn't think that anybody could see it as a movie, but um, I don't know. I was just so moved by the way they talked about it and the way, the, the way that they're thinking about it. And I can't, I can't wait. I am really thrilled. Now, not everything that gets optioned becomes a movie. It's not mm -hmm. guaranteed to become a movie, but mm -hmm. it is really exciting. And um, these it's the same people who made the Fault in Our Stars and Paper Towns movies. I trust them so much. The relationship that we've, we've had over the years has been so cool. So it's really exciting. How are you doing? I'm good. It's late. Um, John, it's nine twenty-seven. Uh, it's we. Uh, it's late for me. I'm sleepy. I got up at four forty this morning. Um, so there. That's that's how I'm feeling. But I'm glad that we could be in the same place to make a podcast together, and I'm glad that we could learn together a little bit about what people are curious about in the world, and also maybe about cups. Well, you have been drinking. <laughs> Um, Hank. Yeah. Would you like a question from our, uh, listeners? You don't want to read my poem? What's your poem? My poem that I posted about the fruit flies. Um, you can just go ahead and read it. People can, people can hear all your typing and it makes them think that you're not paying attention to the pod. I'm looking not. up my fruit fly poem. <laughs> a fruit fly flew through my window screen. There, between the window and the screen, she pupated. Now, too large to fit back through the screen, she wanders in the sunlight, searching alone. It's good, Hank. Um, I would not pursue a career as a poet as such, but the I other, think that was very good. There's also a huge problem, which is that adult fruit flies can't pupate, which is oh. just, it's not, that's not how it works. Well, I'm Only glad... Only larvae pupate, and okay. then they become adults, and that's the whole thing, and I feel weird that that scientifically inaccurate and also bad poem got 2,000 likes on Twitter. 2,000 likes. Man, people really will hit that heart button for anything these days. Well, I'll tell you what, that was actually one of my more successful tweets recently. Um, you know, I've noticed that uh, there's this whole thing on Twitter where people are taking that great William Carlos Williams poem uh, about the plums and turning it into uh, lyrics from the uh, popular music song All Star. Are you familiar with this meme? No. Do you know the, do you know the poem in question? No, but I do know All Star. Okay, great. So there's a William Carlos William poem. I don't know exactly how it goes, but I'm going to give you my version of it. Um, this is my attempt to recite a William Carlos Williams poem. I've had a couple drinks, but fewer than Hank. I have taken the plums that were in the ice box and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me. They were delicious, so sweet and so cold. And here's the uh, version that's been making the rounds on the um, on the uh, on, on the social media, Hank. Okay. Hey, now you're an icebox. Get your plums on. So sweet. That's not the best version, <laughs> Hank. That's not the best version at all. Uh, 
uh, I was on a website that was telling me these plum jokes, and now there's a video playing. This construction unfolds into a home in just hours and costs only $33,000. Oh, and I'm like, this is not what was happening. I was not on a home construction website. I was whoa, whoa, whoa. looking at plum whoa, memes. Whoa, whoa. Suddenly, Hank went from, like, pleasant drunk to really <laughs> aggressive belligerent drunk. What? I just don't like it when videos autoplay, John. Wow, that is, you are, you are coming way too hard about videos autoplaying. By the way, you know where I like videos autoplaying? At youtube.com slash vlogbrothers. I'm strongly yeah, in favor it's, of it. Cause it's what I'm there for. How do you, how do you like a moment on Twitter? Now I'm falling asleep, and she's eating my plums, and he's opened the icebox, and she's taking a plum. Now I'm looking for plums, right. and my stomach feels sick. Now it's all in my head, so sweet and so cold now. I don't really know how that song goes that well. I was going to say well. that, that <laughs> Nick, for Hank's sake, delete that. A little bit of cold plums in my life. There you go. A little bit of icebox by my side. A little bit of breakfast. Is what you need a little bit of forgiveness is what I seek a little bit of delicious those those plums little bit sleep plums all night long. All right, here we go. Here we okay, go. Here what do you go, got? Go, that one's got fifteen thousand likes. Uh, well, the plums start coming and they won't stop coming. Got to hit the ice box for some more cold plumbing. Didn't make <laughs> sense to eat. Lu <laughs> Didn't make sense to eat lukewarm plums. You got the ice box, so go chill them, son. I don't think this person's ever actually heard All Star, but that was close. That was close. That was like it was like an algorithm wrote a version of All Star. I I writing heard, a version of that William Carlos Williams. I poem. saw like like happening on Twitter. There were cold plums. Yeah, and people were talking about it. That's yeah. as far as I got into the meme until now and i feel like i'm explaining something that everybody already knows about but the great thing is that because we're recording this in the relatively distant past everyone will have forgotten about this meme by the time the video <laughs> yeah I they'll mean, be like the oh i up. remember the good old days oh i mean back when all those terrible things that have happened since then hadn't <laughs> happened and we joked about plums uh, at least it wasn't nuclear winter uh this first question comes from nick who writes dear john and hank i've been sick lately my doctor told me to try gargling with salt water to help my sore throat while i was stirring up a mug of the stuff using an art assignment mug I got from DFTBA.com, my number one source for branded drinkware. Man, this guy knows how to get his question asked on Dear Hank right. and John. I started to notice that as more and more of the salt began to dissolve, the sound of my spoon tapping against the inside of the mug became gradually higher and higher in pitch until all the salt was dissolved and the pitch became consistent. I was able to replicate this with another mug of salt water later on. I haven't mm -hmm. measured the difference, but from what I could tell, the pitch raised by nearly an octave. Whoa. Still sick, comma, Nick. I, mm, nice. I am impressed yep. that you can tell the pitch change. You were like... Uh, oh, that I did it in the question asking? No, the question asking. I'm great. Yeah, no, it's because I'm a great singer. Oh, A right. little bit of plum life in my life. A little bit of plum life in All John's right. life. What is it? Uh, What's the answer? So I have noticed this a number of times when I'm stirring... Uh, Gatorade yep. into a cup. Have sure, because you, you gotta you gotta stir that Gatorade. I mean, you're not gonna buy a bottle of Gatorade. I buy liquid Gatorade. You but, do? Yeah, but I I know that you know you come from a humbler background. It's <laughs> things are harder for you. <laughs> My humbler background. Yeah, in the same home as you. Uh, oh, no, just more recently. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't just buy powdered Gatorade for frugality. I also get to make it the exact level of sweetness that I want, which is not the sweetness. I mean, obviously, it's never going to be the exact preference of a person if it's standardized for everybody. So I like to be able to make my Gatorade to the sweetness that I want, and there's only one way to do that. Two ways. You could buy liquid Gatorade and then water it down also. You could do that. But I like to do it my way. I like what I actually like it a little bit sweeter than it comes. So what I do <laughs> is I just open the bottle up and I wait for eight or nine days just for some evaporation <laughs> to occur. <laughs> Everybody has a different way, but that's my way. That's so at, good. All, at all times, if I have, like aging your Gatorade. I always have ten open bottles of Gatorade at different levels of sweetness. Why does this happen? Was the question, not how do you like your Gatorade? <laughs> well, the problem, John, is that I don't really know. Great, let's move on to the next question. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about Gatorade, and but it's weird to me because the the pitch lowers when I'm using Gatorade, and apparently it goes up when you use salt. Mm -hmm. So it probably has something to do with viscosity, 
mm -hmm. that's all that's all I got for mm -hmm. you. Somebody knows the answer to this question. In fact, I've read an article about this and I forgot it. I forgot it. Because that's what you do with information. That this you next learn. question comes from Andrew, who writes, Dear John and Hank, I only turn. discovered the podcast last week, and I've but been okay. listening to eight episodes a day while at work. Andrew, you work too much. Also, you listen to podcasts too much my while you're working. My parents getting divorced after 25 years of marriage. Well, oh this, took, this took a turn. <laughs> while I know they'll be both happier after it, the whole thing is making me cynical about love. Does all love fade over time? What's the point in trying if over half of marriages fail? How do I stop this from happening in my future romances? I appreciate your dubious advice. Definitely not a hurricane, Andrew. First off, Andrew, not over half of marriages fail. Mm -hmm. All marriages end either in death or divorce. Annulment. Good point, Hank. Really good point. <laughs> good, yeah. So all marriages fail, Andrew, yeah. because it, nothing lasts forever, not even cold November rain, as Guns N' Roses once memorably put it. Uh, good. Very, all very good. Every rose has its thorn, just like every cowboy has a sad, sad song. Just like every... Wait, that doesn't rhyme. <sighs> every every, every Tuesday, every... Every in a box. Yeah. Every plum, every cold plum. And every in the box. boyfriend eats that plum in the box. Wait, start over from scratch. So it seems like you're just coming up with it now. Every plum's cold in a box. Yep. Is that right? That's good. And every boyfriend steals your plums from that box. That's good. What? You gotta, you gotta hit the last note. You gotta be like, every plum in that box. I don't, yeah, know yeah. I don't know how the song goes. I don't know. I don't either. I, by, by the way, I don't think that song is November Rain. I think it is a different song <laughs> from the same era. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's definitely the case. Yeah. That's Every Rose Has Its Thorn. Every Rose Has Its Thorn! It's by the way, Andrew, I mean, the answer to your question is that Every Rose Has Its Thorn, man. I mean, that's... that. Here's the That's thing. That's true. No, and every in cold November rain, even that ends. Yeah, mostly. and it's also true that every every rose has its thorn. Love is a rose, so you better not pick it. It only grows when it's on the vine. That's very true. A handful of thorns, and you know you missed it. You lose your love when you steal the freaking ice box from the plums. plums. I don't think you steal the ice box from the plums, <laughs> as such. <laughs> Is that the second time we've made an as such joke in this? I don't know if, if it is. Nick, cut out the as suches. He didn't need to. He didn't. He didn't need to go there. Here's the thing, Andrew. I'm sorry that your parents are getting divorced, um, but it should not make you cynical about love because love brought you into the, this world. Love is both how you became a person and also why you became a person. To quote my own book, "Turtles All the Way Down," available <laughs> in bookstores everywhere, and. Uh, don't be, it's okay to go through a mourning process and a grieving process, and I think that's natural yeah. and good, but that does not mean that life is hopeless. It just means that life does involve loss. Yes, and that things that are wonderful don't last forever, like roses, maybe. I don't know. Also, like plums in the icebox. I mean, no matter how cold that icebox is, they're not going to last forever. Yeah, eventually, they're not going to, they're going to be a little, they're, what are plums when they're dried? They're going to be prunes. That's why I had to eat the plums. I just, <laughs> you were saving them for breakfast, but at breakfast when? Tomorrow? <laughs> why eat them tomorrow when you can eat them today? All right, Hank, this next question. Oh my God. I'm asked, um, today's, it's John question day. I missed three weeks. I've been, I, this, is, it's okay. good. Sure, go. This next question comes from Anias, who writes, Dear John and Hank, last year I participated in a stage production theater workshop thing. On the day we were supposed to present our final product to play, our lovely stage director decided to do a few exercises to calm our nerves before the show. It only ended up making me more anxious, like everything that's ever been designed to calm anyone's <laughs> nerves. Uh, anyway, that wasn't the question. She instructed us to scream out loud as loud as we could, one after the other. Mm. Only one problem. I don't know how to scream. So, while waiting on my turn, I was trying to understand the mechanism that is screaming, while simultaneously asking the people next to me how they acquired the art of screaming, which only made me more confused because the kind of advice I received went along the lines of, I don't know, just let it flow. But what does that mean? How do I let it flow? What do I need to let flow? So many questions. I didn't end up finding out how to scream, and I proceeded to let out a weird guttural noise that resembled a loud snore. I am open to almost any advice on how to scream. <laughs> Alright, here's what I want you to do, Anias. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to imagine 
that there's an ice box. <laughs> You've been saving these plums. You've been saving the plums for so long. They're just, they've reached the perfect moment between plum and prune. And like, the moment yeah, at which you love to have them for breakfast. They say that every plum has its thorn, but not these plums. In fact, no plums, I don't think. They say that. Do they? Every plum has its thorn. Never heard that one. Anyway, Anais, I want you to picture that situation, and then you open that ice box, and what is in there? Nothing. 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 How do you feel right now? Ah! Mm, that wasn't a, that wasn't a scream. <laughs> we're in a hotel room. That's true. If we scream, we're probably it's nine forty two. Yeah, I don't want to get security. I, this is really interesting to me because I think that oh, but, oh, that's awful. That's definitely not a scream. The other day, I'm going to go down one octave. Uh, <laughs> the other day I I had a baby carrier on. Yeah. And uh it has this like mechanism you have to push multiple buttons at the same time to unlock unlock it so that like your baby doesn't accidentally fall out or something. Mm -hmm. And I only hit one of the right buttons and I pulled and then it, I the gap was created and then my finger went in the gap and then I couldn't get it out. My hand slipped and it slid onto my finger. Yeah. And it pinched me so hard that it broke the skin. And I made this noise. In the back of the car with the baby, and Catherine thinks the baby is making that noise because it's a ter like a very not yeah. human man noise. Yeah. And uh and she's like freaking out, like, what's wrong? Well, that's a very weird noise that the baby make. And it just but then I pulled my hand out and I mean it oh wow. I think we could loop that noise that you just made and turn it into a really bad prince song. Like, it would be the worst Prince song there ever. There are no bad Prince songs. That's a good point, Hank. It, well, I could loop the sound that you just made and turn it into, like, a <laughs> cover, a really bad cover of a really good mm, Prince song. Mm -hmm. This next question comes from Warren. Did we answer that one? Oh, yeah. How do you scream? I, I just think this is interesting. I think that it's, like, knowing that you don't know how to make all of the noises. Because it's, like, it took me a while to realize that. That, right. that there were noises I hadn't learned, and right. I just had to learn them. Like, of course, when I was, like, a child and learning to speak, mm -hmm. but you can speak in different ways, and getting gaining full use of your voice, or at least more use than you, are, than you once had, is like a process, and it's not something that, that everybody just does. And I know a lot of people who have a hard time making loud noises. I still can't. And There's I think it's just work. I think it's legitimately, like, you have to go someplace where you, no one is listening and right. be like... I'm going to try to make noises like other people do. Or just don't learn yeah. how to scream I mean, yeah, yeah. and just wait for the moment when you really need it. And then I bet you'll find it. Like when it's an emergency and it's not like the stage manager being like, I know how to get rid of your anxiety. Let's have everybody scream. By themselves? Like if everybody's screaming together, at least then I can fake it. But it's like you scream. Right. And, then, and no, it's I don't want to yell in front of a bunch it's of too people. Too much pressure. Yeah, no. that's terrifying. Ter terrifying. But it you is know a what, good exercise. You though. know what sound I can't make? What? Almost all of the sounds associated with proper Spanish pronunciation, at least according to my children. Because <laughs> my kids learn mostly in Spanish, they speak mostly Spanish at school. And when I try to speak to them in Spanish or say anything in Spanish, they always say, ¿Qué? <laughs> I was like, they understand that like, I'm mad speaking Spanish, at you. but they literally don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> they get like, they're just like, Daddy, no, that's wrong. Like yeah. Alice and her ice water. Yeah, Alice will just be like, no, no, Daddy, in Spanish, she's, she'll always say, in Espanol, you say, no. <laughs> and then I'll be like, no. And she's, no, Daddy, <laughs> in Espanol, we say, no. <laughs> That's very cute. All right, this next question comes from Lauren, who writes, Dear John and Hank, so I just weird to have no power over the podcast. Well, you know what, Hank? I was gone for a long time. Now, once our holiday spectacular is over, you can you can go back to answering half the okay. questions and also doing the intro. I just started, until Elon Musk doesn't get to Mars in 2027, 20, <laughs> I just started seeing this person, and he is literally perfect for me. Literally? <laughs> Perfect is that's a lot of different qualities. Warren, let's if, if you just started seeing each other, let's he's, not. Okay, he's smart. He's funny. He's cute. We like him. He's great. I like him too. Let's not put too much pressure on the Seriously. situation. Yeah, there's a huge catch. He's oh. moving in four months to join the Navy SEALs. That doesn't sound perfect. That sounds like he's moving in four months to join the Navy SEALs. I'm moving in seven months to start law school. 
Well, for those three months when he's in the Navy SEALs and you're not in law school, you guys will have a great time together. He's going to be tired all the time, though. Before we met, we had both <laughs> intentionally stayed single to focus on our careers. However, we both know that we have something special. Uh, trademark. Please forgive this because I know how ridiculous and cheesy I sound. We want to give things time to breathe and grow, but I could already feel this ominous ticking clock. My focus is completely on law school, but I've always believed that we should love whenever and wherever and however we can. Any advice, however dubious, would be greatly appreciated. Not trying to live in a Hallmark Christmas movie. Lauren. Lauren! Just date long distance! Yeah, I mean, you're allowed to live in a Hallmark Christmas movie? Yeah! Sounds very Hallmark Christmassy. I mean, you're going to finish law school at right about the same time that he's going to be entering his third year in the Navy SEALs, and then you can get married. Or not. Whatever. Stop putting so much pressure on the situation, Lauren. It's okay. I mean, it is hard. It's hard when you've got a thing, and you're like, this is going, this is going to be good, but then there, there's this thing that isn't either of you. It's just the universe conspiring against this loveliness. Right. Like, circumstances are organizing themselves not right. in your favor. And that is important to realize that mo John, have I ever told you about the time with the milk when I was in, in middle school? No. So I was... This is a very applicable story. Okay, I can't I was, wait. I was a middle school student, and um, some young people stole my milk. Yeah. My chocolate milk, my unopened 25-cent chocolate milk. I remember. And they were passing it around on the table... Uh, keep away from from nerdy Hank boy, and they uh, then swapped it for a chocolate milk that had been drunk, but they had closed the little carton so that it looked like it hadn't. And they gave it to me, mm -hmm. and and I was like, ah, oh, thank. You. And then I got mad, extra mad, because I thought that they were giving it and being nice, but it turned out that the meanness was continuing. And then I threw it back at them, and then they threw it out. Uh, into the middle of the cafeteria where I proceeded to go over and stomp on it and realize that it was the original not empty milk. Mm. How is this story applicable? It's applicable because they didn't intend for me to stomp on the milk. That was like, that was farther than they wanted to take it. Who's, who, who are the like mean milk stealing jocks of this sto of of the story of the navy seal and the law school student <laughs> the, the the navy seals in law school oh you mean like the institutions yeah. are the bad guys or just the situation okay and it's just like the it was it was set up like it's not a it's not perfectly it's not a perfect analogy i i would actually go further than that I would say that it's also not a good analogy. And it may have nothing to do uh, it, it, with the situation. Here's, I mean, so I think we've solved it for you is the good news. Um, Lauren, you need to purchase 25 cents worth of chocolate milk, stomp on it, and wait for the positive results? The school teachers and administrators then had to talk to me as if I was the one who had caused the ruckus because uh -huh. I had stomped on a 25 cent chocolate milk and made a mess. Yeah. And then I had to explain the situation, but it, it nobody was truly at fault. Yeah. I mean, obviously, no. Like they didn't they didn't want the milk to get stomped. Yeah. So no one was at fault. It was just a situation, though it did begin with bullying. So they shouldn't have done that. Yeah. This, isn't, this is not, it's not working. This next question comes from Mary Kate, who writes, Dear John and Hank, that might be the worst answer I've ever heard to a question you asked. I didn't ask it. A question I asked. Just love. Love and follow your heart, but don't drop out of law school. This next question comes from Mary Kate, who writes, Dear John and Hank, I'm over the moon excited to get married in July, but I'm in a bit of a pickle. Mm. Oh, I just read on. It's not a literal pickle, unfortunately. <laughs> that happened. That would have been amazing. That in the previous question. I'm in a bit of a pickle. How do I get out of this pickle to get married? That's <laughs> it. Burns! My fiance reports that he does not want to marry a pickle. <laughs> I recently accidentally came across some intel that my mom had been planning a surprise for me at my wedding. I'm a huge fan of surprises. Oh, okay. This one is a bit much. 
she intended to have a live owl fly our rings to us at the ceremony. No! I understand the, I understand the impulse, but you're just like, if you don't know this is going to happen, you're going to be like, oh god, giant bird <laughs> attack. <laughs> Who doesn't think... Who thinks, oh, what a nice surprise? No, you think we're being attacked by a bird. You know, Hank, every year or two, somebody does die from an owl attack. What? Google it. Google it while I'm reading the rest of the question. I know she has this idea out of thoughtfulness and love. I'm a big Potter fan. That doesn't, you know what? Like, I, I read those books, and at no point does an owl carry wedding rings into a wedding ceremony. But anyway... Uh, this is clearly a no-good, terrible idea in so many ways. Here's the issue. I was told this information by someone close to me because my mom wasn't able to make this happen. <laughs> really? That's a big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, good. Excellent. But they also said that my mom said, guess I'll just have to come up with a different plan. I'm not supposed to know about the owl situation in the first place, but what if my mom tries to bring a different species of animal to carry rings at my wedding? My question is this. Do I tell my mom I don't want any avian beings at my wedding, or do I trust her to make a reasonable surprise? Quite contrary, Mary Kate. I mean, do do you know the story about almost definitely the murder? Yeah, no, I was going to talk about chocolate milk. Oh, I thought we were still talking about the owl murder. But can we let go of the chocolate milk thing? Because it was never a good bit, and now it's been going on way too long. But you know what was a great bit? The pickle? The plums. <laughs> the pickle, okay. Uh, yeah, I did look up the owl murder, and I'm a little confused. Don't be. I'm not entirely 100% sure that the owl did it. Oh, it is very controversial because... You mean because the uh, accused human killer yeah. probably killed... May have killed the his person. previous spouse. Right. Right. But, yeah. Yeah, there's an argument to be made that it might not have been an owl. But there's also an argument to be made that it was an owl. Who knows for sure? <laughs> All we know for certain, Hank, is that Mary-Kate has is in quite a pickle. Um, here's the thing, Mary-Kate. What if you go to your wedding in a pickle? Wait, but I think, so my feeling is, yeah. if you know that there's going to be a bird, that it's okay for there to be a bird. Right. So you know now well, that if a bird attacks you, right. it's just the ring bearer. It's part of the plan. But I mean, who wants to try to like wrestle a wedding ring from the talons of a bird? But it's very well trained bird. Okay, here's, guess I'll just have to come up with a different plan. That's the direct quote from Mary Kate's mom. It doesn't say that it's going to be a bird. It could be a whale. It that could, whale could, could like, be a walk in. Ring bear. <gasps> a ring bearer. Ring bear. A ring bear. <gasps> oh, my God. Mary Kate, your mom is going to hire a panda <laughs> to come to your wedding. I hope it's a koala if it's oh, going to be a, okay. a non-bear bear. Walk with me here. Yeah. So the bear obviously isn't going to be able to hold the wedding rings, right? Yeah. What's it going to do? Well, I think just strap it to him. Wrong. Dead wrong. Right, Like three hours before the wedding, you feed no. the koala two wedding rings. <laughs> and then right, and then the koala walks down the aisle... <laughs> It poops. <laughs> out they come. You dig them out and of the koala poop. And it's like that like extra awesome coffee that's been through the digestive system of a cat or exactly. whatever. Exactly. So with your wedding ring. Yes, with this ring I thee wed. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, Hank. We solved it, Mary-Kate. Tell your mom to hire a koala and to pick the wedding rooms but out of the But make koala sure poop. you know a good amount about koala digestion, because I think that might be real slow, and so you might have to Ooh. feed it to him like a few days ahead. You might have like a four-day wedding. <laughs> 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 we got a lot of weird wedding traditions in America, but we don't have that particular one. Yep. Where you feed a koala two wedding rings, and then the wedding lasts until the koala poops. <laughs> <laughs> and some, sometimes it's just like a 10 minute wedding and then other days it's like a 6 week wedding you know 
Oh, that's man. Good. This is just to say I retweeted the plums that were in the Icebox tweet, which you have probably already seen. Forgive meme. Nice. That's good. It's mm-hmm. got a, it's, it, it. It had a surprise ending. Hank, mm-hmm. we're going to answer one more question before we get to the all-important news from Mars and AFC Wimbledon. Okay. But first, I have to let you know that today's podcast... Is this podcast, a Christmas episode? Yes. Is brought to you by... Koala Poop! Koala Poop, the future of weddings. This podcast is also brought to you by Really Bad Prince Songs. Really Bad Prince Songs, they don't exist. And of course, today's podcast is brought to you by the plums that were in the icebox. No longer. No longer. Not thorny. And this podcast is finally brought to you by Aged Gatorade. Mmm. Been sitting on that shelf there for seven days, getting slightly sweeter so that John can like it the way that he likes it. That's right. So delicious and so cold. Hank. Yeah, John. Before we get to the news from Mars and AFC Wimbledon, I want to uh, just clear up a couple of things. I have a, I have a couple of uh, corrections to give. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been gone for like a month because of my vertigo. But um, before I left, I said that Facebook might be listening to everything that we say through our phones. I was kidding, but lots of people took that seriously. Facebook is not listening to everything we say through our phones. They get plenty of data just from what we choose to give them. Um, And I apologize if that wasn't clear. Also, one other thing. Um, Sierra wrote in, Hey, you may remember in a previous episode of the podcast, there was a young person who was trying to figure out how to take their secret pet snake with them to college. Right. The parent was like, you can't have a snake. They got one anyway. Hid the snake for more than a year. Yeah. And then had to go to college, and but didn't want parents to find out about the secret snake. Update! Sierra writes, Dear John and Hank, I'm a freshman in college, and one of my greatest fears has recently been made a reality, and it's all your fault. There is a snake loose in my dorm. <laughs> Wait, is it? Is it all our fault? Apparently one of the residents had a secret pet snake in her dorm room, and now it is loose, wandering the halls, ready to ruin my life. I can't help but assume that someone in my dorm is a fan of the pod, and has listened to your ludicrous advice regarding (laughs) secret snakes, and because of that there is a snake roaming the halls of my building. Uh, This is more of a complaint than a question. (laughs) Sierra. Uh, Yeah, there's Dear Centennial Residents, Housing and Residential Life staff recently learned that a resident in Centennial Hall had an unauthorized pet snake in their room. The pet snake escaped this resident's room. We are currently writing to notify you about this and assure you that the snake does not pose a physical threat to anyone in the building. (laughs) A psychic threat. Yes, an existential threat, maybe, but not a physical threat. <laughs> what? I mean, the coldest of all comforts, right? Yeah. <laughs> you are- Don't worry, the bear that we've set loose in your dorm has been declawed. <laughs> It's so they are they very Doesn't pose docile. a physical threat. Doesn't pose a physical threat. All right, I've been, uh, the it last... has been fed two wedding rings. <laughs> and any minute now. <laughs> All right, this last thing comes from Sarah, who says, "Why are you cutting down honeysuckle? It is super sweet and lovely. If you eat it, please, uh, it will change your life." Google how to eat uh, honeysuckle. Here's the thing, Sarah. Uh, before my vertigo, but after I got home from the Turtles All the Way Down tour, I spent um, a, several weeks cutting honeysuckle out of my backyard while building this uh, path that was partly a metaphor, but also like a thing that took 90 hours of my life. And um, honeysuckle is an invasive plant, and it is a disaster to uh, natural Indiana plants. And the reason I was cutting it out is so that we could have some sweet, regular Homemade Indiana shrubbery, <laughs> not gross, stupid honeysuckle. So I don't care how good the juice from the flowers taste, it is an invasive weed, except it's tree sized. Could we like harness it? And nope. and like maybe people would want it so bad that we'd over farm like we just like over harvest it and it'd all be gone? Because apparently it's pretty good. I've had honeysuckle, it's tasty. No, we can't. That's a good idea, Hank, because humans are traditionally good at over-harvesting anything that we like, <laughs> but we literally cannot like honeysuckle enough to get rid of all of it. I could spend the rest of my life cutting honeysuckle it's pretty off hard. my property. I, like, it, does, it seems like a b- bit of a difficult thing to like bottle. Like, yeah. one bud, and then you suck it out and spit it into the bottle, and then one, and... It's going to take a long time. And you can, I mean, Gatorade is available at stores. (laughs) All right, Hank, this last question comes from Emma, who writes, Dear John and Hank, I was confronted at work yesterday evening with my first official 
get well card signing. Mm. I waffled, and, and I... And I found myself at a loss for what to write. I waffled between ideas for a solid five minutes before settling on a short, unfeeling, get well soon. I can't help but feel like a horribly unsympathetic person for not thinking of anything else. But it is for a coworker and all, so anything more emotional just seemed weird. What the heck is one supposed to write in a get well card? It feels like signing yearbooks when you write something repetitive and codified that is totally disconnected from any of your genuine feelings. Also, I can't help but feel like telling someone to get well soon is rather insensitive, since it's not usually up to them whether they get well soon or not. <laughs> yeah, it's just like... It's a great point. Yeah. Why are you telling, like, is yeah. that an order? Right, like, I, I already had that idea. <laughs> It's like, oh my god, I until I read your card, it hadn't crossed my get mind well, to get I never better thought about quicker. That. That's weird. Yeah, I had, I had uh, kind of I hope that, you get well soon. Right. I hope you are feel yes. I work with a lot of elderly people, so I'm afraid this will slowly become a more pressing issue. <laughs> Please help with my dill, Emma. With my dill. Because she's in a pickle. Dilemma. But also, she's in a pickle. But a you didn't Dill get Emma! You just got it. There I you go. Did. There you go. That's Took you a second. So good. That's All right. Good. Emma, um, what you write... This is a great question. I thought it was a I recently joke. got a get well card from mm -hmm. all the people at our office because of the uh, incapacitating vert vertigo that I had. And I don't want to criticize anybody because we, we work with very many nice people. But some of them said get well soon, to which my reaction was, I already thought of that. <laughs> I've already tried that strategy. It did not work. Mm -hmm. And here I am, not, still not well, um, less soon than I would want. And uh, the one that I, the one that I liked the most, the one that I found the most helpful personally, mm -hmm. was I hope you feel better. Mm, I hope you feel better is good because it's, like, it's never not true. Even when you're good, I hope you feel better. Yeah, right. I I hope you feel better than I, you feel right now. Ditto. I, you seem like you feel pretty good. I do, but I could feel better. Right. And I, I hope, hope I, I hope, hope I do soon. <laughs> I hope I, I hope I feel better soon. Yeah. I hope you feel better soon. It is a universal lift up. Mm -hmm. And you're never, yeah, you're never feeling all the way. Yeah. Sometimes I think people don't need to feel better than they're currently feeling. Another strategy, Emma. It's like that you, need to, you need to feel a little worse mm, than you're feeling right maybe. now. Maybe. So uh, just occasionally, not almost never, but occasionally. Another thing that Emma could do, since she knows that she works with a lot of elderly people, is she could write... I understand that you are an elderly person, and this will probably become more and more of an issue as time goes on. <laughs> but I don't know if that would be insensitive. And I hope that you feel better soon. <laughs> but likely, this will continue to be a problem. <laughs> I, uh, uh, if it's not if it's not too bad of a of an illness, yeah, I would draw a fish. Sure, and then I draw a little. Little line mm -hmm. comes out of the fish's butt, mm -hmm. and then it says "poot." Mm -hmm. That's the that's, that's, that's your all. whole thing. Yep, that's it. Man, I haven't I haven't heard a story that good since the milk story. <laughs> <laughs> the milk story is great. Hey, it's such is, a good story. Uh, what is the news from it's Mars? Just, maybe it was a little misplaced. What is the news from Mars? NASA. Yep, you've heard of them. They're great. They uh are working on the next generation Curiosity rover thing, Mars 2020 rover. Yeah. And you may have heard that Curiosity's wheels are not great shape. Oh, yeah, it's a big problem. Yeah. So they've I've actually had to start driving Curiosity backward. Right. To, to Just to try to get, like, the tread worn on the other side. Basically, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, like, you know, like, the first, first wheels hit the rocks first, you know? Yeah, I get it. Um, and, uh... So NASA is working on new wheel designs, and they have uh, just let people know about this cool, flexible chainmail wheel Ooh. Uh, that's made out of chains. Uh, that's going to give us the, the traction we need, but also the flexibility and uh, the durability that you want in a wheel that's going to be driving around on the uh, surface of Mars uh, for, you know, hopefully... Five, maybe even ten years with the mission like this. Um, this wheel, I believe, uh, it uses... Okay, so yeah, it, it, nickel titanium shape memory alloy. Mm. Such alloys remember their original shape and spring back immediately after deforming, meaning they, they retain their original shape and performance. So there's a cool, a cool uh, new wheel design coming out of NASA to make Curiosity's uh, new cousins more... 
durable and long lasting. That's exciting. But not as maybe not as exciting as the AFC Wimbledon. Da, 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 da. Hank, uh, so AFC Wimbledon played, uh, I think, I, I can't remember who, I think Charlton uh, in the second round of the FA Cup. The FA Cup is this competition in England where for the first two rounds, teams from the lower leagues play each other. And then if they can make it to the third round of the FA Cup, that's when the Premier League teams and the teams from the second tier in England, the championship, come in, okay? Mm -hmm. So, like, a few years you might remember that, uh, a few years ago you might remember that AFC Wimbledon made it to the third round of the FA Cup and they played Liverpool, remember? And I, I was very, very difficult for yeah. me because I grew up a Liverpool fan and I was uh, like... Uh, but they're not going to beat Liverpool, so... And indeed they didn't. They lost 2-1. But oh, they, they played Liverpool at home... Which is great because it's like a big club and they come in and, and it's on TV and everything. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't have been, it's not as good as if we'd played Liverpool at Liverpool. And do you know why that is? Because the Liverpool sells more tickets. 60,000 tickets as opposed to AFC Wimbledon Stadium, which sells out at 4,800. Mm. What if I told you that the third round of the FA Cup, Wimbledon made it to the third round of the FA Cup thanks to um, a goal scored by the Montserrat and Messi Lyle Taylor, the resurgent Lyle Taylor. He seems to be doing quite some well. Some saying. Yeah. Um, he's on he's fire. Got, he got rid of those frosted tips. He still has the frosted tips. No, never mind. So, no, nobody's perfect. <laughs> um, so, uh, they made it to the third round of the FA Cup. They could have drawn any team. They could have drawn Swindon. They could have drawn the franchise currently flying its trade in Milton Keynes. But they drew the best possible draw. Tottenham away, which means that they are going to play at Wembley, the national stadium, because Tottenham is currently building a stadium, so they're playing this season oh. at Wembley, the place where they won the League 2 playoff to go to League 1. Dad was there. My friend Stuart was there. You were unable to attend. Rosiana was there. It was magical. You would have had a great time. I don't know what you were doing, parenting or something. So they're going to play at Wembley uh, in the third round of the FA Cup against Tottenham, and here's the great thing, Hank. Two things. First off, AFC Wimbledon has never lost a game at Wembley. Ever. <laughs> ever. They've, so played, it, they've played two, and they won them both. <laughs> so, first off, we're probably going to win. <laughs> Secondly, even if we don't win, it is so much money. It's so much money. One game against Tottenham is so much money. Like, we might stay up entirely because we happen to draw Tottenham away. So you're gonna spend this money immediately? I would hope so. You're gonna Things take are... it and be like, be like, hey, hot shot 22 year old. More likely like, hey, last guy on Tottenham's bench. <laughs> you want to spend the last three months of the season on loan in South London? And he'll be like, yeah, of course I do. Great. Come on, man. We can afford your wages for three months. Um, so it's very, it's incredible. It's funny. Sometimes in football, results matter. And sometimes in football, you just have to pull Tottenham away in the third round of the FA Cup. And like, if we win or tie, that would be amazing. But it also doesn't matter. Yeah. If we lose, also amazing. But I if just, you win, hey, everybody, you get another... everybody, go, everybody go to the game. <laughs> hey, the, get get hey, a ticket. Money. Get a ticket. Is it going to sell out? I don't, probably not. Probably Tottenham not. fans, yeah. Tottenham fans, get tickets to the hot, hot third round of the FA Cup. It's probably the only time you'll play AFC Wimbledon ever. ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, don't miss this opportunity, Tottenham. Uh, it's incredibly exciting. We just said ever at the same time, and then we giggled the same, and I'm uncomfortable. Now. Well, and the last thing I wanted to say just before we uh, close the podcast out, Hank, is that, um, you know my favorite character from the DC universe? <laughs> yeah. Paul Manafort. <laughs> it's like really Are you good. familiar with him? That's a really good joke, yeah. It's good, you see, the... People say, like, oh, the DC Universe isn't that good. Like, well, Paul Manafort is an amazing story. Like, <laughs> you can't write this crap. Paul Manafort just had his bail revoked. What does that mean? He was on, he was out on bail because he's been charged with conspiracy against the United States. Yeah. He was out on bail. What did he do? He just had his bail revoked because he's been working with a Russian spy while under house arrest. What? On an op-ed piece about why we should have better relationships with the Russians. What? Yeah, so they revoked his oh bail. 
I mean, this <sighs> DC Universe stuff is so amazing, Hank. What's happening in the DC Universe right now? The Justice League stuff is great. The the you got the Mueller on the one side, you got the crazy Manafort on the other side with his three passports and his password to his email being Bond 007. It's gold, 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 gold. I just want to congratulate the writers of the weird <laughs> timeline in which we found ourselves. Uh, this is great. This is great stuff. I'm, I'm recording this in the past, by the way. So if in the interim, the president has resigned and or fired the special counsel and or whatever, it's gold. It's all gold. It's terrible. It's awful. We should. It, I, I hate myself for paying attention to it, but it's also gold. Hank, thank you for potting with me. Yes, John. Yes. What did we learn today? Very little. We learned that the milk story isn't very good. And we learned that it certainly wasn't placed in the proper place. <laughs> Uh, we learned that the plums that were in the icebox were both delicious and cold. And we learned that AFC Wimbledon has never lost a game at Wembley. Or at least I learned that. Not yet. <laughs> when does that game happen? January 6th or 7th or 5th. I can't go because my friend Enrico is turning 40. And I called my wife and I said, do I have to go to Enrico's birthday party? <laughs> and she said yes. And then I called Enrico and I was like, do you want to go to London with me? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he said, I can't because my wife will get mad because I'm turning 40. <laughs> so I can't go to the game. I'm kind of annoyed about it. I'm still thinking, I'm thinking maybe what if I flew his wife over there too? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. All right, John, thanks for potting with me. This podcast is uh, edited by Nicholas Jenkins. It's produced by Rosiana Hals-Roas and Sheridan Gibson. Our head of community and communications is Victoria Bongiorno. This music that you're hearing and at the beginning is by the great Gunnarola. And as they say in our hometown, don't, don't forget, forget to be awesome. awesome.